Hello and welcome to a new maintenance vlog. This week it's about the spinnaker poles. When the downwind configuration on the Amel is set out, it's a very sturdy and safe system. It's basically a, a goose wing system with the genoa on one side and the ballooner or spinnaker on the other side. However, it's uh, quite a complicated system with lots of parts. In fact, there are four poles in all, two on either side of the boat and 11 lines if you include the spinnaker halyard. Perhaps I'll do a different blog on the whole spinnaker setup at a later date. But this week's blog is just about trimming the spinnaker poles. How we did it, the mistakes we made and how it turned out. Um, we're going to be doing a lot of uh, downwind sailing over the next few months. Um, so we're going to need the poles more than ever. Um, the poles on the Super Maramus are quite long. They, they stuck out quite far so we were in a heavy swell. These poles would almost be touching the water. Um, so as we're doing a, a, a transatlantic, we wanted to shorten them and make them safer and uh, easier stored. I've seen a few people cut them down on the Super Maramus to match the 54s. So they've chopped about 57, 60 centimeters uh, off the ends, uh, which is what we're going to do now. So the first job was to remove the end pieces and because the rivets weren't in the best of conditions, it was probably a good time to replace them anyway. the rivets out and take them off. Um, it, it was only being held on by just the, the shaft of the rivet really so we were lucky to kind of get to that point. Now what I've done is I've taken a Jubilee clip and put it around the pipe so I can get a, a perfect uh, circular cut around it. Ideally I'd use a chop saw but all I've got is my grinder so uh, uh, it should be okay. What could go wrong? So once the end pieces were off, I could get to the rope which holds on the hook. Now the hook is for hooking on the poles to keep the spinnaker poles off the deck when they're not in use. Actually, while these are off, um, I'm going to widen the hole on the on the end piece because the roller on the end doesn't actually twist. It's really stiff, and so it doesn't fall in line with the sheets. So uh, I'm just going to widen that hole just by a millimeter or two, just to make that movement a bit freer. Then I re-drilled the holes for the new rivets. But of course as ever, when you're working on the pontoon, life goes on around you and you end up chatting as much as you do doing the maintenance work. I also find a bit of lube helps with the drilling of metal. I also had to re-drill the holes for the rope that holds the hook on. And also use the rope cutter to melt the ends to really fix those stopper knots in place. So next was adding the new rivets and because it's an aluminium pole uh, you should only use aluminium rivets and uh, not brass, copper or steel. If you do use the wrong rivets then this can lead to galvanic corrosion. Even though I use the same material as the poles I always use a little bit of Duralac anyway which further helps prevent that galvanic corrosion.
But of course, if you're a regular viewer of these blogs, you'll know that nothing ever goes to plan. So I, I cut these to length, got the perfect length, um, and then tried to put it back on board and then forgot to take into account three centimeters of a bracket that we've got on the stanchion post. So I'm having to take the ends off and take another th uh, three centimeters off to get them to fit. So that's another like three or four hours of, uh, of extra work. Woody had them all cut and we tried to slot them together but it just turns out that they were um, they're about four centimetres too long so he's got to do it all over again. He's got to take the rivets out, recut them and then um, uh, start again basically. But instead of taking the new fittings off I decided to cut it off the other end which gave me an opportunity to replace those rivets too. Also, the little 22mm diameter pole that I'd made to fit the poles on under the stanchion posts was a little bit too thick. So I had to shimmy off about another 2mm of the inside of the end fitting of the pole. And there you can see the extra colour I had to make to increase the diameter of that pole from 22mm to 25 so it actually fitted into the T bracket on the stanchion post. I also replaced the clips that hold the metal end pins in place. Now I forgot what these are called, um, but they basically they come off small dinghies for holding ropes in place, but they're very handy for this job too. So these are the metal pins that are used to hold the sheets in place when the rope goes round the edge of the pole, and also they help clip the pole onto the stanchion post when they're stored on deck. Uh, before the spinning poles used to stick out here, so uh, we've got some T brackets here, and then I've uh, we made a little um, adapter to fit through the end of the poles. So now it kind of sits nicely off the deck and tucked into the side of the boat, so rather than sticking out. So we've sailed thousands of miles like this now. Not only does it work very well as a spinning pole, it also stores neatly on deck in the new brackets. So you pull that, it brings the halyard down, which you've now got, and now I'm going to attach the um, unhooker. The hooker. That's hooked. Oh, That's unhooker. Unhooker. That unhooks it. <laughs> Just check. <laughs> so thanks for watching, and a special thank you to our patrons who keep us going through good times and bad. If you found this blog useful and you're the type of person who likes to return a favour, then you can buy me a beer by following the links to PayPal or Patreon in the description below. And now you can also buy one of our cruise shirts by following the links to our merch store 